Gigabyte is a confusing company to say the least, because after ranting yesterday that the B760 Gaming X doesn't have the same specs as the B760 Eros Elite, thus breaking the Gigabyte tradition, the Z790 Gaming X actually does have the same specs as its Elite counterpart. Why? I have no idea, Gigabyte are just doing moves that are beyond my comprehension at this point. Though that doesn't mean that the Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X isn't a bad board, it will cost you just $10 less than the Gigabyte Z790 Aeros Elite, and for that price you get pretty much the exact same board. Starting off with CPU power, he have 16 plus 1 plus 2 power phases rated at 60 amps, which honestly is literally the only difference between these two boards, at least when it comes to uh, features and specs, seeing how the Elite has a 70 amp power stage instead. A difference so small that no normal user will even ever notice it. And that VRM, which is pretty well cooled, is going to be enough for pretty much any CPU you throw at it, even a 1300KS, unless you're really going crazy with overclocking. And PC expansion is also pretty much identical. Three full-size physical 16x slots, with one of them being rated at PC Gen 5, and four N2 slots in total, all of them running at Gen 4, plus six data connectors as well. All pretty good stuff, though I'm still gonna complain about Gigabyte motherboards not featuring an extra 1x slot for the smaller cards, because, well, again, it's just kind of tradition that I complain about that on this very channel. The rear I.O. is also what you expect from Gigabyte. The amount of USB Type-A is absolutely fantastic, with 9 in total, with just 4 of them running at USB Gen 2 speeds. The single USB Type-C port runs at a whopping 20 gigabits per second, though it's important to note that a lot of other, even more budget Z790 motherboards are even starting to have 2 USB Type-C ports, so just something to keep in mind. Add to that 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi Fi 6E, both integrated DisplayPort and HDMI, and Gigabyte's trademark disappointing audio options with just two audio jacks and optical spdiff, and you have a set of rear IO that's just, well, a gigabyte at its finest. Now you can get this board in DDR4, DDR5, Wi Fi, and non Wi Fi variants, so there's at least one of them that matches your needs exactly. And again, seeing how it costs pretty much the same as the Elite. What exactly are the reasons for even going for this one? Well, the main ones are the looks. The Elite obviously has the trademark Aorus look, you know, the more gamery, edgy one, while the Gaming X has a more, well, generic look that isn't as try-hardy and will fit in nicely in more builds. Though, of course, if you want to be really out there, the Elite is a much better choice in that option. So, yes. It does really just come down to looks. So if you want to get the gaming X yourself, then make sure to use Amazon links down in the video description below. And while you're here, maybe check out our Patreon, because even a single dollar a month truly goes a long way. I'd also like to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan LKB, Justin Rage, Ella Vronyak, Bardage Velka, Max Summoner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby, Jesse Herbman, and Shannon Odgun. Down there, you're going to find our merch store, our Discord server, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.